Hey guys, I'm Drake here and welcome back to another Clash Royale video. Now the next global tournament in Clash Royale starts in just over a day. So of course, today I'm going to be going over the top 5 decks that you can use in this upcoming global tournament. Now with balances now only happening once every 3 months, the meta isn't going to see as many drastic shifts. However, there are still quite a few new decks that have started to gain more popularity in this month's meta. So today, I've done my research in both Grand Challenges as as well as top ladder and I've picked out five decks that are both relatively easy to learn as well as very very effective in this current meta. As usual for each deck I'm going to be going over a quick breakdown of the deck as well as a couple of strategies and synergies that you can utilize to maximize the number of wins that you can get in this tournament. Of course deck links are going to be down in the description and hey while you're there feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Also if you'd like to support me feel free to use code legend array in the shop and with all that out of the way let's get right into the decks number one minor wallbreaker cycle now of the decks that i'm going to be sharing today this deck is actually rather difficult to pick up initially but once you actually get the playstyle down it is very very deadly and very very effective now being of a quick cycle archetype the goal of this deck is to be able to apply pressure and maintain high aggression throughout the entire match this way your opponents are going to constantly have to spend elixir defending meaning that they can't build up a push of their own this means that starting off the match you're going to of course be making the first play 9 out of 10 times. Start off by cycling something that will generally get chip damage as well as force out a response. Things such as wall breakers, spear goblins, a miner, or just cycling a log will all be great plays in order to begin that aggression out of your own hand. And after that, you're just going to be focusing on trying to get chip damage over and over onto the tower. There are so many ways for you to apply quick pressure with this deck. The ability of this deck to just assemble really, really cheap pushes while also advancing your own cycle is just so so effective and requires your opponents to be constantly spending elixir and defending what you have down that being said of course during a match your opponents are of course going to want to build up their own push so in terms of defense this deck is a little bit more difficult however there are still some very very effective ways of defending your opponent's pushes the first line of defense you can use is by playing aggressively by going in on offense while your opponents have a push coming in you force your opponents to actually defend that push, meaning that they can't support their own push in return. Now, when it comes to just straight up defending a big push coming in, there are still definitely quite a few options. The first is the bomb tower. The bomb tower is something you're going to have to really, really utilize in order to pull off some effective defenses. With the cycle speed of this deck, more often than not, you're going to end up having to cycle multiple bomb towers in order to successfully defend pushes. In addition, fireball is going to be really your main damage dealer and then you can utilize the zap bait element between the bats as well as the spear goblins to try and get as much value as possible occasionally it may just be effective to just throw a set of wall breakers in the opposite lane just to apply some additional pressure all in all this is a very fast and aggressive deck it has some really strong defensive options but you have to be very very careful as to how you play them to manage your cycle properly i would strongly recommend that you practice this deck quite a bit before you actually try and run it in the global tournament but it definitely Definitely is a very very solid option when mastered number two royal giant giant skeleton now this deck has been meta for a couple of months now and it continues to absolutely top the charts as being one of the most deadly and most annoying decks to face in this game. Starting off the match, it's okay to actually make the first play. You can cycle something quick such as splitting zappies or a bar barrel. And after that, you're going to just be constantly building up pushes over and over again. Once your opponents play something in the back or react to one of your plays, then it becomes very, very situational. And honestly, there are quite a few ways that you can execute an offensive push with this deck. The first type of push you can do is a single lane push. You can go in with a giant skeleton and then a royal giant right behind it and of course the giant skeleton bomb is going to do a great job at blowing up everything your opponents have to initially defend that push. Additionally, the fisherman can pull away any tanks that your opponents have and then the bar barrel combined with the earthquake are going to be very very effective at taking out any of your opponents range, supporting
supporting troops that they're going to use to take out the royal giant. Another way you can play offense is by going double lane. This is more effective against cheaper decks as it causes them to struggle a little bit more when it comes to trying to keep up with the pressure in both lanes. Start off by going with a giant skeleton in one lane and once that giant skeleton reaches the bridge then go in with a royal giant in the other and then of course just support your push accordingly. Fisherman away any tanks, Electro Spirit can take down any type of swarm that your opponents have and then of course the earthquake is there to take down any and all buildings. Now the defensive end of this deck relies on three cards. The giant skeleton, the hunter, and the zappies. The giant skeleton of course is known as a lane clogger and of course you can just play him in a lane and then once it dies it'll blow up any sort of push that the opponent has surviving. A hunter and the zappies are going to be your main air defense so if you know that you're against an air deck make sure that you're saving these cards so that the opponents cannot outcycle them. Fisherman is able to get quite a few king tower activations against opposing units so when it comes to knowing your fisherman interactions it is very important that you know quite a few of them in order to maximize the value that you can get on the defensive end. All in all it is still a more aggressive deck so you're going to be focusing a lot more on offense but make sure that you're not over committing and spending all of your elixir just to get destroyed off of an opposing counter push. Number 3, Mortar Earthquake Cycle. Now this deck is another one that is a little bit more difficult to use, but again, once you get the playstyle down, it is very, very deadly and honestly quite annoying as well for your opponents to face. So this deck is another aggressive cycle deck. So you're going to be focusing on aggressively cycling and constantly making small pushes that aim for chip damage upon chip damage on your opponent's tower. Starting at the match, I'm always going to be making that first move. May that be cycling a mortar, going in with spear goblins, or cycling one of my small spells such as a log skeletons or a knight after that you're going to be playing quite reactively while trying to get as much chip damage as you possibly can there are a couple ways to do this the first is of course with the spear goblins the log as well as that mortar in addition you can also utilize a firecracker to try and get chip damage onto the tower when you angle her properly last but not least the earthquake is also a very effective way of getting tower damage over and over again in fact the earthquake is actually the spell that deals the most amount of damage per elixir in terms of tower damage. It even does more damage than a rocket once you take into account of the elixir cost difference. Now although you are going to be rather aggressive in this deck, you are going to have to play a lot of defense. Now the defense of this deck relies around one card the firecracker you're going to want to make sure that that firecracker gets as much value as possible therefore in a defense you're always going to want to be playing that firecracker as the very first card and you're either going to want to try and protect it as much as possible with your knights your spear goblins and your tornadoes or you're going to want to cycle to a second firecracker once your opponent takes out that first one one synergy that a lot of people actually are not quite accustomed to is the firecracker tornado combination. Since the firecracker is actually a splash unit, by tornadoing all the units together, you're actually maximizing the amount of value that you can get out of your firecracker. Speaking of the tornado, it's very important that you also know all of your king tower activations. This deck is very, very cheap, and so you're going to have to rely on getting as much value out of your defense as possible, and to get as much value as you can, you're going to need that activated king's tower last but not least you also need to know your spell damages once you get towards the end of the match especially in triple elixir you can cycle two or even three earthquakes insanely quickly and on a tournament standard that's six seven hundred damage guaranteed off of the opponent's tower so make sure you know how much damage your spells do so that you're able to finish matches off before your opponents can even realize number four electro giant lightning now this is probably the only Electro Giant deck that really is seen, however it is very very popular and for good reason. It is quite effective and honestly a lot of players still are getting used to defending that Electro Giant. Now taking a look at this deck, you can see a lot of overlap between a more popular version of Splash Yard with the Baby Dragon, the Ice Wizard, the Goblin Cage, as well as the Tornado forming the core of this deck. And that means that the playstyle of this deck is 
still going to be beatdown like because you're trying to build up big electro giant pushes but there's also more of a control aspect that is a part of it as well utilizing the baby dragon the ice wizard as well as that tornado to form the crux of this deck's defense starting off the mesh i'm going to be a little bit more on the passive and reactive side maybe i'll cycle a goblin cage or a bar barrel at the start but other than that i'm just going to be reacting to everything that my opponents play once they play something a little bit more on the expensive side or once you know that you have a big enough elixir advantage then you're going to be able to begin building up an electro giant push from the back note again that the electro giant is a elixir so you're going to have to be very careful as to when you're timing your offensive pushes in terms of building your actual offensive pushes well this is actually quite simple the electro giant is going to be your main tank and then you just support it with the dark prince the baby dragon as well as that ice wizard however sometimes it might be worth it to actually save up for your spells the lightning is going to be very useful if the opponent has medium health ranged units which can be very very effective against that electro giant another approach you can take is to use the tornado on an offensive push the nato synergizes with not only the baby dragon the ice wizard and the dark prince but it also synergizes very well with the electro giant since the electro giant has a small radius where it zaps everything that attacks it you can tornado all the ranged units inside that range of the electro giant and that's just going to introduce so many synergies throughout your entire push getting yourself so much value on an offense on the defensive end like i said using that ice wizard and baby dragon to control any defense is going to be the way to go in addition dark prince can serve as a mini tank as well as the goblin cage as well distracting any building targeting units and spawning an extremely high damage output brawler once that cage actually breaks all in all it's a very control based speed down deck so make sure that you're being careful as to how you manage your elixir and how you spend it on your offensive pushes Number 5, Lava Hound Balloon. Now, I think Lava Hound is literally just one of the archetypes that will guarantee a spot on this list until they actually nerf the Lava Hound itself. And this is because the Lava Hound archetype is just so, so effective and oppressive because of how many air units that are packed inside the deck. Starting off, of course, this is a very, very easy deck to play. Lava Hound first play is literally a perfectly okay play in this deck, especially once your opponent actually uses one of their air counters, meaning that not only they'll be out of cycle, but the opponent will also be slightly lower on elixir now the play style of this deck is very beatdown ass building up those big pushes over and over again and trying to overwhelm your opponents through the skies of course in terms of supporting your push there are a couple things you do have to watch out for the first thing you're gonna have to watch out for is your opponent's spells because a lot of units in this deck are rather weak to medium and high damage spells such as the fireball as well as the rocket you're going to have to make sure that you either watch what spells your opponents have in hand or you're going to have to space your units out accordingly to minimize the value that your opponents can get one way i like to do this is to actually not go all in on a lava hound push instead just support it with something small such as your skeleton dragons and then once your opponents use their spells then you can go all in with everything else you have at any point in that push once the tower is distracted you can send in that miner to not just tank for the tower once the lava hound pops but also to begin damaging down the opponent's defensive options for example if they have a musketeer send the miner to the musketeer so that the miner will begin taking that down while your opponent's entire defense is targeting that lava hound arrows and the zap will be insanely useful in this deck taking being able to one shot any swarm options that the opponents have on the defensive end miner and barbarians are going to be your ground defensive options while the inferno dragon is there for any tanks and the skeleton dragons are going to be a relatively decent option for any sort of swarm if your lava hound just even connects onto the tower it's going to guarantee a a couple hundred damage at the very least not even counting the lava pops all in all very very simple deck to play very very safe deck to play and also probably one of the easiest ones to pick up as well so there we go those are the top five decks that i would recommend you guys run in this month's global tournament from now on there will actually be two global tournaments per month one will be a normal 1v1 battle and another will be a custom game mode which i really do quite like again 
make sure you practice some of these decks before you actually run them just so you have a little bit of experience and if you're interested the deck links are going to be down in the description but unfortunately guys that's all i've got time for in today's episode huge thanks to all of my channel members you guys are the absolute g's if you enjoyed please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel and as always this is blender and i'm signing off see you guys next time